still got it. After all, an awful lot of miserable years in the closet, I'm finally coming out and telling people that, it, that I am a homosexual and I don't mind it. This is the first time I felt like a full woman, besides being in love with, in bed with my lover. I think in New York is about a million gay people, and I think if everybody comes out, it would be much easier. Only by this can we be certain that we are children of the truth. Anyone who fails to love can never have known God, because God is love. I'd like to see more gay people become proud enough and confident enough to make an open stand and not not care and not give up their power to heterosexuals. Well, shit, that happened a long time ago. That's all I think about it. I mean, I've been liberated all my life. Because I ain't scared of nobody. I've never been high in no class and I've been gay since I was so small. Gay liberation is just not being ashamed of what you are. And being gay is a very natural thing. Now, you have three important themes from the play on the board. What I would like you to do for the rest of the period is to pick one theme, write a short essay in your own words, describing how you feel that this theme applies and is as meaningful to our present day situation as it was in the time of Shakespeare. Okay? And uh, just to keep you from vegetating over the weekend, lucky. He looks conceited anyway. Not bad.
Hey, come on. Cut that out. I'm just being affectionate. Yeah, I know, but that went out in the 50s. Oh? <laughs> I hadn't heard. Thanks. Hey, how old are you, anyway? 23 or so? 26, actually. You don't look that old. Hey, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. A dirty old man like you seducing a young guy like me. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? 23. How long have you been out? Um, I suppose since prep school. I still make it with chicks once in a while. It's, it's not all that bad. But I know what I prefer. And you? What? How long? Oh. I've known I was gay for a couple of years, but if you mean practicing for only about the last six months. I thought so. Refreshing. I had a big religious hang-up. I was even a monk for a couple of years. A what? A monk in a monastery. God, how quaint. Thanks. I was still going to Mass when I first came to New York. But after a while, when I accepted being gay and realized, and finally came out, I guess, none of it made any sense to me anymore. <laughs> the church is a pretty straight business, you know. The Bible doesn't have anything nice to say about guys who dig sex with other guys. <laughs> the church generously offered me two choices. Either a life of religious celibacy or a life of uh, sexual abstinence in the world. Some choice. Yeah. I was crazy to think I could go through life without sex anyway. Anyway, the whole thing left me with a bad taste in my mouth about God. Like he's either sadistic or incompetent, if he's out there at all. <laughs> but I don't think you were interested in getting into my theology. <laughs> well, look, uh, I'm flying out of here in the morning for a business meeting in Cleveland and a week stay with my folks. So. I get the hint. <laughs> no, really, I'm not kidding. The plane ticket's in there on the desk. Go see for yourself. I believe you. Well, I better get out of here and let you get some sleep. Do you think we'll ever see each other again? I don't know. What do you think? I'd like to see you. Well, when I get back into town, I'll give you a call and we'll see what happens, okay? Okay. Come on. Be quiet. Let me get some sleep. You with somebody else. Hey, crossing a good right? Why don't you look where you go? I mean, I was trying to see what. Marie and the kid lately? I stopped by on Tuesday. Marie's still down in the mountain fishing. <laughs> well, I'll see you Monday, okay? All right, Mark. Take care, Marie. Good weekend. Bye -bye. Yeah, right. I took Sammy a frisbee. You know the kid's a genius.
I'm sorry. Uh, Dave? <laughs> yeah. Uh, half an hour? <laughs> I'm sorry, Valerie. Bye, bye. All right, bye bye. Bye. Here's to your return. Hey, I thought you said you had a roommate. I do, but he's hardly ever here. He stays over at his chick's place almost all the time. He even sleeps there. Huh. How convenient. He's straight? I hope so. I mean, does he know you're seen? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. He just needs somebody to help out with the rent. Until they get married. They're getting pretty serious, I guess. No, oh, sounds like they're trying to ruin a good relationship. I'm too excited, I can't eat any of this. I don't have any appetite. I think I'm falling for you. Christ, what are you, some kind of romantic nut or something? You're a pretty good fuck for a former monk, you know? I suppose that's all you smart ass Yaleys know about. Oh. Well, thank you, Miss Allie McGraw. even sure I believe in love at all. But I feel it. I know I shouldn't ask, but still, it's still it's nothing. <laughs> Look, we enjoy each other, right? We have fun together, and that's all. <laughs> love means never having to say you're in love.
Clark, have you ever been involved with anyone before? Before what? <laughs> before now. Come on, just answer the question. No, not really. I never wanted to be particularly. I guess there were a couple of guys along the way, but nothing ever worked out. I'm really not up to that sort of thing yet. Oh, great. So, uh, what am I supposed to do? Just wait? Be just another guy along the way? There you go again, pushing this romantic thing. Why do you have to be so intense all the time? Look, I'm flattered that you'd like to include me in this fairy tale world you're building up, but it's just not my line. So I'm involved. What more do you want from me? Well, for a starter, why don't you knock off the Joe Cool crap and admit we're lovers? I mean, what else do you call it when two guys are seeing each other and have really great sex, and this goes on for months? Who do you think you're kidding? Come on. Out with it! God damn it! Ow! Say, wait! Say it! Oh, wait a minute! No. <laughs> Say it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I love you. Again. I love you. Now let go of me. Yeah, right, you do. Now once more for good measure. <laughs> ah, hell no. Now what do you think this is? <laughs> once more. Okay. You're with my fucking romantic friend. I love you. Whatever that means. <laughs> Beloved, we are gathered here in the presence of God to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate ordained of God unto the fulfilling and perfecting of the love of man and woman in mutual honor and forbearance. And therefore, it is not by any to be taken in hand lightly or thoughtlessly, but reverently discreetly, soberly, and in the fear of God. Into this holy estate, these two persons come now to be joined. Therefore, if any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Marriage is therefore not by any to be undertaken lightly or ill-advisedly, but seriously and prayerfully, duly considering the purposes for which it is ordained, that husband and wife may give to each other lifelong companionship, help, and comfort, both in prosperity and adversity, that God may hallow and direct the natural instincts and affections created by himself and redeemed in Christ. And that marriage being thus held in honor, human society may stand upon firm foundations.
stay around here all day. Let's go to a movie. All righty. What do you want to see? What's on? <laughs> hey, how about this thing with Robert Redford? Okay. Even if it's bad, he's good to look at. What time's it going? Uh, 12, 2, two 4, four six. 6. Okay. <laughs> You're not going in yet. I'm not going in. I've been You're going not going in yet. Oh, Linda, look at you. You've got it all over you. Hey, lady, how would you like it if somebody did that to you? Hey, Hold hey, still, just shut up and mind your own business, all right? What a bitch. You're a slob. That's what you are. You're just a turn slob. Around. Linda. I gotta use the stool. Come on, cut it out. I'm gonna be late. I have to get dressed too, you know. Oh, does the old man need the stool now to put his socks on? What am I supposed to do? Perch on one leg like a crane? Hell no. Just stand there like this, take your sock and slip it on. <laughs> Break your neck. Look at You seen my blue shirt? No, I haven't seen your blue shirt. Did you get the laundry out Saturday? Did I get the laundry out Saturday? Did I get the laundry out Saturday? Why don't you just stay in bed in the morning until I'm finished dressing, <sighs> okay? Fuck you. Just see if I bother to get up and give you my comforting presence at the breakfast table anymore. <laughs> There's hardly enough time to talk. Besides, who wants to talk in the morning anyway? All right. Just see if I care. Jennifer, could you bring me the uh, Thompson file before you go to lunch? Yeah. If it had gone to thee, I know mine would have taught thine heart to show more pity unto me. But love, alas, at one first blow did shiver it as glass. Those pieces still, though they be not unite, and now as broken glasses show a hundred lesser faces, so my rags of heart can wish, like, and adore. But after one such love, can love no more.
are you doing? Transplanting these. Hey, I think I'll go out for a walk. It's a great mm. day. If you wait a minute, I'll go with you. I'm almost finished. You don't have to. But I want to. Well, you know, actually, I think I'd prefer to go alone. Oh? I'll only be a little while. Mark, what's wrong? Nothing. Really nothing. Look, I just feel like being alone, that's all. Okay. You want to skip dinner? Hell no. Look, I'll only be gone for a little while. Stop creating things that aren't there, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, see you in a little while. That's more than I can say for you. Oh. Anything good on? There's no movie coming on later. Like uh, butting around a little bit, huh? huh? I don't know. I feel fine just being with you here like this. Oh. So now he's going to punish me? No, I'm not. I'm just not into it right now. That's all. Well. So I guess you're going to make me rape you. Is that it? Yo, you macho I want to watch the movie. Jeez, will you stop yeah. it? Well, shit, you never used to talk like that. Christ, we had sex three times already this week. That's more than we had in the good old honeymoon days. Besides, I'm a little sore, if you don't mind. Here, Snoopy, you take care of him. Oh, poor Snoopy. You see me you want to have sex with me? You do. Hey. You want to have a threesome? You, me, and Snoopy? Huh? Go get him, Snoopy. Get him. Come on. Come on. Oh, hell. I've had enough of this. I'm going to bed. I'm sick and tired. Come on. Watch the movie. Come on. No. Movie. Please, you'll like it. You knocked over my beer can. No, sorry. Okay. Just for a little bit. God, I don't know why I had to marry such a schmaltz. You should just be glad you're married at all, period. While I'm up, does anyone want more coffee? Uh, uh, please. One? Yes. Two? I do. Three. Fine. Oh, why don't we move into the other room where it's more comfortable and I'll serve you in there. Okay. 
So, this is the coveted new linen you bought in Brussels. Someone finally noticed. <laughs> it's very nice. Thank it you. is. Davy, will you help me clear off the table? Sure, I'm glad to. You better keep a protective eye out for your jewels, Davy. <laughs> Word of advice. If you want a marriage to work, you have to own something substantial together. Miguel and I were thinking about taking a house at the Grove next summer. That's not quite what I meant. <laughs> Mark, are you actually going to leave David alone out there with that old lech? Charles is nearly so bad as Alan here makes out he is. He just likes to pretend around you two, that's all. Charles and I are different, you know. I don't need the sex that he does. With him, it's sort of a, a confirmation that he's still desirable. I used to be hellishly jealous when we first got together. I made him throw away his old telephone numbers and his dirty magazines. <laughs> but that doesn't change somebody's basic nature. There has to be a lot of give and take in a marriage. I know I'm a bitch, and he just has to put up with it. Life is, as they say, full of compromises. At this point, I could care less if he brought a different trick in here every night, but let him bring the same dewy-eyed little innocent in here twice and begin acting like he's serious about it and I managed to wheedle myself into that bed right between them. I've put five years of hard work into this marriage and I don't intend to let anyone or anything fuck it up for me. Well, I don't know. But it seems to me that we're all a little depressed over these sordid revelations. There's nothing sordid about it. It's just the way things are. Coffee? Oh, you're so quiet. You haven't said two words all evening. Uh, I think Miguel is a little bit overawed by the surroundings. And he's kind of shy. Well, with his looks, he shouldn't be. I know. Thank you. You have a very lovely apartment. Thank you. Are we still going to the bar? I did promise Teddy we meet him. Let me finish my coffee and then we'll go. Anybody else care to join us? Good Lord, no. Edgar and I haven't been out together in a bar in ages. Everyone's standing around like statues and that deafening music. Oh, it gets worse every year. I should think you'd be tired of it by now. Yeah, well, I am, sort of. But Miguel wants to go. Such devotion. Well, as they say, may we never have it worse. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? I do. I just don't like spending my Saturday nights with a bunch of faggots, that's all. If you weren't so goddamn critical of all of our friends. Whose friends? All right, my friends. But we've been with Alan before. Why the sudden change? David, I never really liked him that much. I only put up with him because he was your friend. Mark, sit down. Come on. Please. Something's really been bugging you lately. Don't you think it's better to talk about it? Sometimes I think we can talk too much. I don't think we talk enough. What's the matter? Okay, David, we'll talk. I just don't understand why we have to do everything together. Just because we're lovers doesn't make us inseparable, does it? I mean, I thought we agreed we wouldn't be possessive. I thought you understood. I thought we... What's the use? I'm sorry, I don't... And cut this I'm sorry crap. You make me sound like I'm the one to blame, like, like I'm the one that's being difficult to live with. But you hold everything in until you explode. If we could just talk oh, things David, out no more. David, it work. Look, why don't you go on home and I'll, I'll meet you back there later. I have some thinking to do. Why don't you just come home and sleep it off? I promise I won't be in the way. Look, David, I need some time to be by myself. Can't you understand that? Where are you going this time? To the baths? Oh, fuck you.
thought you'd be asleep by now. I couldn't sleep. Why didn't you take a pill? Where have you been? We'll talk about that tomorrow. Or please, I won't be able to sleep. I don't want to talk about it now. I'm tired. We have all day tomorrow, okay? We have now. Look, David, if you don't shut up, I'm going to go in there and sleep on the couch. Is that a threat? Jesus Christ. Go back to sleep. So where did you go last night? Oh, for a walk. Some walk. To the park. Okay? You don't have to get upset. And you don't have to be so jealous. Oh, I know. I realize that it doesn't mean anything, that you're just letting off steam, but... Look, David, you're just going to have to stop imposing your screwed-up romantic ideas on my life. I mean, I can understand why you feel the way you do. Sleeping around while being married is a sin and all that crap. But I just don't fit into that mold. I'm liberated. I'm not quite as traditional as you are, and you know that. You knew that. I didn't think it would be such a hassle, but it is. I'm not sure if I know how to handle it. Well, we're going to have to do something. We can't go on like this. Fighting and making up and fighting and making up again. It's no good. I've been thinking. Yeah? Well, we're in a rut. I think we should try experimenting with different things. Like what? going downstairs and take a shower and I come back I expect this door to be open. You okay? Sure. But are you sure you want to go through with it? Well, this is what you brought me out here for, isn't it? Might as well make the best of it.
It's not that I'm uptight or anything. It's just that what do you do if it doesn't turn you on? <laughs> Stupid question, that is. Don't even think about it. Half the time, you don't even know who it is. It's cool. Neither you or I are the same person he was last year. But you simply won't let go of your romantic notions, will you? Well, anyway, we're still living together, aren't we? This is the first thing we're doing together in almost two weeks. Look, David, we both have our own separate lives to live. And you just don't seem to understand I that. understand, but then why be lovers? I mean, what's the point of living together if we each have our separate lives? because we get along so well. Always the wisest. You can't ever be serious, can you? You know, half the time you avoid the problem by walking away from it, and the other half you're joking. If you weren't so hung up with your goddamn masculinity. My stomach's always in knots lately. It hardly seems to affect you at all. It affects me. So how? I can't eat, I can't work. My whole system's fucked up from tension and worrying all the time. Well, don't worry. Mark, what are we gonna do? Come on, let's get going. No, wait, let's talk. Please stay, let's talk. You and your talk, there's nothing more to talk about. Mark, look, it's cold and I'm tired, do you mind? Will you wait a minute and listen to me? There's nothing more to be said, now let go of me. Mark, I'm gonna get through to you if it's the last thing I do. David, now you tell me. Get off yourself and get off my fucking back. Please tell me where you're going. I'll call you when I know where I'll be staying. I'll pick up the rest of the stuff later.
know, it's not the end of the world. Tomorrow's another day. And no one knows that better than I do. It's funny, whenever I thought of us breaking up, if it ever did happen, I always thought Mark would be the one to walk out. It's funny. Not so strange. From what you told me about Mark, he never could make decisions. He's not as secure as he appears to be. I don't know. Well, now, you listen to me. Now, I know those types. They're in control as long as you let them be in control. It was you who always had the real power. You convinced him that you should be lovers, and then you moved in with him. And now that it's over, it's a result of your move again. Shit, I don't want to control or be controlled. It wasn't like that. It was, and it still is. Your problem is that you, you worry too much about the perfect relationship, where you're always happy and having a good time and sharing. It's all a lot of crap. It's a myth. I learned it the hard way. My trouble used to be that I believed it. You remember, Miguel? I thought, now, here's the person I'd like to spend the rest of my life with. I honestly thought that. And I convinced myself into believing it. But then the same thing happened. Only this time I became bored with him. Alas, I got bored with him. But no more. I'm through pushing things. I meet a guy, and we hit it off, and we make it. And that's it. No illusions, no plans for the future. I enjoy it for what it is. And just what is it? Usually some nice company. Some nice sex. Sometimes even great sex. But that's enough. I'm, I'm through with expectations. You've certainly become the cynical one. No, not cynical. Simply realistic. Well, I don't think I'm being unrealistic. Mark and I were in love. We could have made it together. We still might. David, don't be a fool and cause yourself unnecessary grief. Accept the fact that it's over. The sooner you get them out of your system, the better. There's no use making things any worse than they are already. I can't just not see him anymore. We've had arguments before. They blow over. It's just a little more serious this time, that's all. We need time to be away from each other, to think things out, that's all. Well, you're certainly welcome to stay here for the time being. You know, it's not the kind of time that you want to be alone. Thanks, Alan. I really appreciate it. You know, you're one of the few people that I can actually talk to. Something Mark could never understand. Well, how do you feel now? <laughs> have you had dinner? Why don't you have something? There's some leftover meatloaf. Come on, you'll feel better. a very good idea seeing each other today. It's good seeing you. How's work? Oh, okay. The kids are getting restless. Spring fever, I guess. I've missed you, Mark. I've missed you, too. Hey, how's your stomach? Better. See, time can heal wounds. Yeah. Have you been seeing anyone lately? Not really. 
How about you? Yeah. I've had a couple tricks. Actually, I've been playing it cool. I've been pretty busy at the office, you know. I usually get finished around 8 o'clock, and by then I'm so exhausted I just want to come home and collapse. Any plans for tonight? I'm supposed to go to a bar with Alan. Do you think he'd be annoyed if you changed your plans? I don't think so. Why? I thought you could come home with me. I don't know. Would that be a good idea? I mean, what would it mean? Why does it have to mean anything? You said you missed it. I do, but not only sexually. I don't think it'd be good for my head. What do you think? Hell, I don't know. You know we could try and see. I can't figure you out, Mark. Well, don't try. Come on, let's go. I want to suck your cock. Jesus, Mark. How can you say that? You said you missed me, didn't you? But how do you expect me to forget what's happened between us? You think I'm just a trick you can pick up and ball and then ask to leave? David, don't. Oh, you want me available when you're in the mood? How can you treat me like that? Look, David, I obviously have feelings for you. Do you think I'd be here if I didn't? Now, let's not try to solve all our problems in one afternoon, okay? Look, the point is now I want to go to bed with you. Do you want to go to bed with me? We were together Sunday for the first time in almost a month. He asked me to stay over. I didn't want to, but... I missed him. David, you're looking for trouble. All we could do was reminisce. We couldn't talk about it in the present, our feelings. It was damn awkward. But did you really expect things to change? I didn't know. I still think I love him, Alan. He still turns me on. But things weren't the same in then. What do you mean? I felt as if I were being tested, being used. I felt like an object in an experiment. It was almost as though he were trying to figure out if he were over me yet. Yeah, well, that sounds like Mark. Oh. I'll get it. <laughs> Hi. What's your name? You have a cute daughter. Thank you. Did you thank the man for the ball? Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Try the baths. I don't think I'd like them. David, you take everything so seriously. Go ahead, it'll take your mind off your troubles.
my feelings about gay pride. I'm quite proud of myself. Well, not proud. I'm very accepting of myself and other gay people. I'm bisexual myself, and, you know, I think everybody should be able to let live and do as they see fit in their own sexual life. This means that we can walk the streets as ourselves and not be harassed by anybody and just be ourselves. Be proud to be ourselves. You're welcome. Just exchange the words faggot for nigger, kike, or cunt at the appropriate time. It's all part of the same mentality. It's an inability to cope with human diversity. It's a pretty fucked up society when the army gives me a medal for killing a man and a dishonorable discharge for loving one. I think we need a radically new definition of what it means to be masculine. Gay people may very well be performing an historic function. I mean in the sense that they're undermining the ridiculous notion in our society that you can only have sex with one person, and that's the person you're married to. The public always goes looking for role playing. Who's dominant, who's submissive. The great thing about gay relationship is that you both come into a relationship as two equal human beings. For me, being gay means not limiting my feelings to one person. But it's also not being afraid to commit my feelings to one person many times over. to be free in what he does or what he does in bed, but I don't think it's something that should be, oh, having to be protest. I think it should just come very natural. It's an innate part of you, something to appreciate. We preach in our church that people should be proud of themselves, proud of being gay in all parts of their life, and being gay is good, so one should be proud of it. Uh, being able to live your life, live it the way you see it, and uh, not being ashamed of loving one of your own sex. It means that I'm very proud of my son and that I want to fight all ignorance and bigotry for all gay people. Austin, Tilson, Auschwitz, Buchenwald, in which a million of our brothers and sisters were scooped up off the streets of Europe and taken to that place and there submitted to the ultimate solution to gayness, incinerated and turned into soap. Never again, never again will we allow this to happen. It means getting out and making the people realize that all these years they've been wrong about what they've been thinking it about. It was a us. celebration, you know, not so much a political thing. I'm not very political. But for me, it was a celebration of just who I am and being with other gay people. I don't know. All I know is I'm gay and I'm proud and I worked for it and I'll continue to work for it until the day I die. And I have no qualms about it. And if anybody wants to fight me about it, these may not be too big, but I got big shoes. I don't know. It just means that I'm glad to be what I am, a lesbian. I think it's important that we all came out today, and I'm glad that I came out today, even though it's going to be on film all over wherever it's going to be. Let him see. I'm out. Actually, I was just watching. I wasn't really in the march. I just happened by. You sound apologetic? Not really. I'm just not a very political person. I was very hung up with ideology at one point in my life. So now I'm pretty skeptical about causes or soapboxes. And that's what you think this is all about? I don't say I'm against it. I'm just skeptical. 
I just never knew enough about it to become involved with it. I never felt I had to advertise my homosexuality. I don't go out of my way to conceal it, except perhaps at work where I keep my social life to myself. There's a lot of people who think like that. I'm just not so sure that marching down 7th Avenue shouting gay is good is going to change the way straight people feel about it. But you can't say that shutting up about it's done much good either. It doesn't matter to me whether they like us or not. I just simply think that gay people ought to have their rights too. Sometimes you've got to make noise and organize to get things changed. To me, I guess that's what this march is all about. I don't believe that coming out for one day a year is going to liberate these people or change the system that much. I mean, how many of these people who march today will go back in their closets tomorrow, afraid to even talk about it? Probably right. Some of them. I'm a teacher, right? Being, well, letting people at work know that I'm gay would complicate things, to say the least. And does coming out mean I tell the kids too? <laughs> I enjoy my work. Being completely honest about my personal life will jeopardize my professional life. And whether I like it or not, that's the way it is. For me and for many of these people, too. I mean, we can't always be as honest as we like. But that's exactly what this march is trying to do something about. I mean, yeah, I know you're right. The way the society is now, there are certain people who can't afford to march. So those who can, do it on behalf of those who can. And that in hopes that someday there'll be no need to demonstrate the right to make love to anybody you want, any way you want. Well, you got to start somewhere. I suppose. <laughs> really got carried away. Yeah, we were really into it. How long have you been living here? I guess I've been too busy surviving and putting myself back together after Mark to take on the world's problems yet. Liberating myself is the most important thing for me right now. Well, it's really all part of the same thing, isn't it? Maybe. We've been separated for almost a year now. The divorce will be final in a couple of months. How long have you been married? Two years. Wife, kid, duplex apartment, the whole bit. And we get along better now that we're separated than we ever did when we were living together. I should sort of say uh, we're more reasonable with one another. Marriage. Why do people bother to get married in the first place? Why did you get married? I keep going through changes. Just say I, I know myself better now. And you? I mean, do you ever see the guy that you were living with? No, not anymore. We were seeing each other for a while. But we kept looking for things that I guess just weren't there. It's over now. And I'm not as depressed and desperate anymore. I'm desperate. for your body. I've been hot for you all day. Oh. I had noticed I thought we were just coming back here to uh, have something to eat. That's what I mean. I'm starving. Dad have been more parents to him than I have babysitting at home. I really have to spend more time with him. Anyway, I'll have my degree by February. 
And my friend Ann says that she's going to keep her eyes open in case the job opens up at school. It's pretty hard finding a job in the middle of semester, isn't it? Yeah, but Ann says that someone usually gets pregnant and has to leave. So maybe I'll get lucky. And get pregnant. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm covering a concert at Madison Square Friday night. You want to go with me? Does that mean I have to carry your equipment? Well, well maybe just a couple of cameras. Sounds like old times. Say, since we're extending invitations to each other, I was wondering if maybe you'd like to spend Labor Day weekend with us in the Hamptons. It would be great for PJ. And, well, it was my folks' idea. They'd really like to see you. Look, I've made other plans. I'm going to the Cape. Can't you change your plans? I'm going with somebody. Look, you'd like him. He's got eyes like you. No, not exactly like yours. You know, I can really talk to him. He likes Emily Dickinson. I'm happy for you, Jason. Oh, no. I'm <laughs> making the best of our situation. Do you believe it? Three days of rain? <laughs> Say cheese. Cheese. Fromage. Provolone. Say I love you. Ah, uh, I love you. I need you. I need you. Absolutely cannot live without me. <laughs> I absolutely cannot live without you. So why don't we live together? And why don't we live together? I didn't think you'd ever ask me. But I didn't. Have you thought about it? Of course I have, believe me. But I'm very wary of putting myself in that position again. I'm not as aware of who I am yet as I'd like to be, at least before I live with someone again. Can't we work at that together? We do, Jason. But we don't have to live together to do that. <laughs> now we're spending all of our time together. And that's because we want to. You want to and I want to. But somehow when two people live together, want to gets mixed up with have to. I don't want you to ever have to do anything for me. And I don't ever want to have to do anything for you. For now, let's just enjoy wanting to be together. What you're trying to tell me is that you're afraid of commitment. I am committed to you, Jason, but not probably the way you want me to be.
Look, Jason, after Mark, I thought I would never want to live with anyone ever again. And yet when I met him for the first time, I was as much in love with him and involved with him as I believe we are with each other. But I pushed it, and we moved in together, and then a year and a half later, we don't even see each other. I can look back and say, okay, I was wrong. And that's good, because I don't waste any time longing for him. And I can start looking for someone else. But I don't want to do that for the rest of my life, either. You can end up searching for Mr. Wright for as long as you live. I know that what I'm asking for, very few people can give me. But I believe there are people. Okay. Say I love you. 